This is a group with many gifts. I'm sure one of your gifts is the gift of a smart and capable brain. I'm confident that's the case. Cleverness is a gift. Kindness is a choice. Gifts are easy. They're given after all. Choices can be hard. You can seduce yourself with your gifts if you're not careful. And if you do, it'll probably be to the detriment of your choices. I just turned 30 years old and I've been married for a year. I told my wife, Mackenzie, that I wanted to quit my job and go do this crazy thing that probably wouldn't work since most startups don't and I wasn't sure what would happen after that. I got the idea to start Amazon 16 years ago. I came across the fact that web usage was growing at 2300% per year. I had never seen or heard of anything that grew that fast. I was working at a financial firm in New York City with a bunch of very smart people and I had a brilliant boss I much admired. I went to my boss and told him I was going to start a company selling books on the internet. He took me on a long walk in Central Park, listened carefully to me, and finally said, that sounds like a really good idea, but it would be an even better idea for someone who didn't already have a good job. That logic made some sense to me, and he convinced me to think about it for 48 hours before making the final decision. It really was a difficult choice, but ultimately, I decided I had to give it a shot. I came across the fact that the web, World Wide Web, was growing at something like 2,300% a year. This is in 1994, and anything growing that fast is, even if its baseline usage today is tiny, it's growing so fast, it's gonna be big. And so I looked at that and I was like, there's gotta be, a, I should come up with a business idea and to get, you know, on the internet and then let the internet grow around this and we can keep working on it. And so I made a list of products that I might sell online and I started force ranking them. And I picked books because books is super unusual in one respect, which is that there are more book items in the book category than there are items in the other category. There are three million different books active and in print around the world at any given time. So founding idea of Amazon was to build universal selection of books. The biggest bookstores only had 150,000 titles. And so that's what I did. And, I, and the most important thing to observe is that you have to draw the box big. Books don't just compete against books. Books compete against people reading blogs and news articles and playing video games and uh, watching TV and going to see movies. Investors come in all shapes and sizes. They have different investment horizons, different approaches, different uh, beliefs about what the right kind of portfolio uh, looks like. And uh, so it's not one, you know, people use Wall Street as a shorthand, but there isn't one type of investor. They come in all shapes and sizes. And you have to be super clear about what kind of company you're trying to build, what your approach is. We laid that out in our 1997 annual shareholder letter. We said we were gonna take big bets. We said they were gonna fail. We said some of them hopefully were gonna work. Uh, we said we were gonna invest for the long term, that we were gonna uh, try to take advantage of mar market opportunities as they arose. And there's a certain kind of investor who is aligned with that approach. And so again, you can hold the ballet or the rock concert and both can work. Um, just be clear about which one you are and then people can self-select. You look at the original Amazon business plan, there was no hint of anything other than books in it and it was not on my radar. I was thinking I wanted to build an online bookstore, that was it. And um, you know, it worked way better than I thought it would and we launched music and that worked better than I thought it would and we launched videos and, um, and that worked better than we thought it would, and then I sent email to customers, so I picked about a thousand customers, and I said, besides the things we sell today, books, music, and video, what would you like to see us sell? And the list came back incredibly long tail. It was almost like whatever was on their mind at the moment. It was like, I wish you sold windshield wipers for my car. And I was like, really? Windshield wipers? That wasn't done in the business plan, but that's an interesting idea. This is so important because the secret sauce of Amazon, where there are several principles at Amazon, but the number one thing that has made us successful by far 
is obsessive compulsive focus on the customer as opposed to obsession over the competitor. And I talk so often to um, other CEOs and uh, some other CEOs and also founders and entrepreneurs and I can tell that even though they're talking about customers, they're really focusing on competitors. And it is a huge advantage to any company if you can stay focused on your customer instead of your competitor. So then you have to identify who is your customer. Um, so at the Washington Post, for example, is the customer the people who buy advertisements from us? No, the customer is the reader. And in the school, who are the customers? Is it the parents? Is it the teachers? No. It is the child. I'm focusing on those things that I think make Amazon unusual. Uh, uh, genuine customer obsession. So like every single thing you just mentioned, when, you know, when our senior executives sit down and review those programs, they're looking for customer obsession. Where, how is it? The second one that we're focused on is invention. We don't like to do Me Too offerings. We want to take, we'll be inspired by something we see in the world. We're not hermetically sealed, but we want to put our own twist on it. We want to try to do something better for customers that's pioneering. So where is the invention? You know, uh, why is this going to be better for customers than the already, whatever is serving that need in the world today? And then a willingness to think long-term. So I'm very focused on those things and, and, and also the operational excellence, reducing defects at their root. Those are the things, that's the culture of Amazon, it's the habits that we have, those are the things I'm focused on and those are the things that all of our senior people are focused on. You know, they've been the company for a long time and you know, I'm incredibly lucky because I get to work with uh, what are effectively paid volunteers, all, you know, the senior team at Amazon, you know, most of them have been at the company for 10 plus years and They've ridden the um, stock appreciation of Amazon. They could all go, you know, sip pina coladas on a beach for the rest of their life if they want to. And they, you know, I'm very grateful to them that they choose not to um, because they, they do it because it's fun and we're, we're, we're building things. We have so many talented people and the common thread in all of those things is our approach. We have some very specific ideas of what we want to do, but I believe in the power of wandering. All of my best decisions in business and in life have been made with heart, intuition, guts, not analysis.